In this question, we're asked to find the x and y coordinates of the center of mass of this triangle-shaped steel plate. Now, we can actually say that the y coordinate of the center of mass is going to equal zero, and that is simply based on the symmetry of this shape. We can see that the shape has an even distribution of mass above the x-axis and below the x-axis, and so the coordinate of the center of mass on the y-axis must be zero. The challenge for us is to figure out where along the x-axis the center of mass lies. So in other words, we have to find the x-coordinate of the center of mass, and we're going to do that by applying this definition right here. And the greatest challenge, perhaps, in solving this question is to come up with this expression here for dm. We typically have to express dm in terms of x because that way we can actually integrate that expression. So that's our challenge right now, is to come up with dm in terms of x. And to do that, we're going to take a look at this triangular steel plate in more detail. And the question gives us a hint to consider a thin strip, a thin rectangular strip somewhere along the length of this triangle. And when we do that, we can see that it's a very thin strip. That means its width in this horizontal direction would be a measurement dx. Basically, dx just means a very tiny distance along the horizontal direction. And since this strip is located on this line right here, we could say that the distance from that point down to the x-axis is going to equal y, and then by symmetry, that distance would be the same to the lower portion of our thin strip. So that distance is also y. And if we look at that rectangle carefully, we could come up with an expression for its area. We all know that the area of a rectangle is the length multiplied by the width. We can see from our diagram that the area is going to be very tiny because our rectangle is very thin and very tiny as well. So we're gonna actually call this a differential area because it's so small. And the length of this tiny thin rectangular slice we can see is actually 2y. It's the distance all the way from the top of the strip to the bottom of the strip. So that's going to equal 2y. And then the width as noted is dx. So that's an expression that we wish to keep in mind. The trouble with it is that it is expressed in both y and x terms. We don't want that. We would like to express it in terms of just x alone. So our next challenge is to be able to come up with an expression for y. And we can do that by considering this line right here. And we have that point on the line. And so we just need the equation of that line. We need to express the y coordinate of that point in terms of x. We can see that because it's a straight line, we could use the y is equal to mx plus b. The line passes through the origin, so the y-intercept is actually zero. So we can actually simplify it to just y is equal to mx. m, of course, is the slope. And if we were to travel from the origin to this point way over here on the line, then we would have to rise a distance of 10 centimeters and then run a distance of 30 centimeters. So rise of 10, run of 30 gives us a slope of one third. So we can write the equation as y is equal to one third x. And that's wonderful because we're going to substitute that one third x into this y right here. So now our differential area, our dA, can be written as two multiplied by one third x dx. And if we simplify that just a tad, we can say dA is equal to two thirds x dx. So this is looking good, but it still doesn't relate to mass just yet. And to relate this differential area to mass, we have to set up a proportion. So for example, we could say, in proportion that the differential area is going to be proportional to the differential mass of that strip. And then underneath to create the proportion, we can take the entire area of this isosceles triangle and then proportion that to the entire mass of the triangle. So we'll use capital letters to denote values for the triangle as a whole. Now that means we need to find an expression for the area. And that's relatively straightforward. We can perhaps clean up the diagram a little bit. We could get the area of this strip rather easily because we know that the area of a triangle is equal to one half times the base of the triangle times the height. And remember, we're looking at the triangle as a whole. The base of the triangle is 20 centimeters. And then the height is 30 centimeters. Basically, the triangle is sort of tipped on its side. So this means that the area of our isosceles triangle, if we were to multiply that out, 
is going to be 300 centimeters squared. So that's pretty handy. And then of course, we also know that the mass of this triangle, if we go all the way back up to the top, was 800 grams. So we can actually insert these values into our proportion over here. So now we have DA over 300 is equal to DM over 800. And then what we'll do is we'll solve this for DM. And to do that, we can simply multiply both sides by 800. And so then we would have 800 times DA over 300 is equal to DM. And then we could simplify that a little bit. We have 8 thirds DA is equal to DM. Now, let's not forget that DA was an expression that we determined earlier. It was 2 thirds X DX. So we can actually make yet another substitution and plug in 2 thirds X DX and that's going to equal our dm. So that's great. This is the key expression right here. We're going to be plugging that in to find the x coordinate of the center of mass. And when we integrate, we're going to have to integrate along a lower bound from 0 to an upper bound of 30. So let's begin to set up that integral. This is for the x coordinate of the center of mass. It's going to equal 1 over capital M. Remember, capital M was the complete mass of the triangle, so that was 800 grams, times the integral of x and then dm. But dm is this expression right here. So we're going to plug that in for the dm. We can simplify it a bit. We have 16 ninths and then we have x dx. And then as stated earlier, we will be integrating from 0 to 30. So now we're getting somewhere. We can actually simplify our integral by factoring out this 16 ninths. So you're going to want to multiply 16 ninths by 1 over 800. And when you do that, you should get 1 over 450. So we're going to rewrite the integral now as 1 over 450 times the integral from 0 to 30. And then what's left on the right side of the integral is x times x. You can see it right there. That's going to create x squared. And there is our integral. Now it's just the calculus. And to integrate x squared, you know a simple power rule would be to add 1 to that power, so it becomes x to the power of 3, and then divide by that new power. So divide by 3, and we're integrating from 0 to 30. We can clean that up a bit because we have x cubed over 450 times 3, which is 1350. And then we're integrating from 0 to 30, so those are the bounds. So we're going to plug in 30 first. We have 30 to the power of 3 over 1350, and then subtract the lower bound plugged in, which is 0 to the power of 3 over 1350. This cancels out, and if you punch the rest into your calculator, you will end up seeing that the x-coordinate of the center of mass is equal to 20. And that is in centimeters, and then recall that the y-coordinate of the center of mass, due to the symmetry of the figure, was 0 centimeters. So these are the coordinates of the center of mass of that steel triangular plate. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.